The following program was produced by the United States Courts. Hello, and welcome to On Topic, where we talk about the programs, issues, and people shaping the federal judiciary. I'm Charlie Hall with the U.S. Courts. The FJC's mission has changed a great deal since it was founded in 1967. Here to talk with us today is the Federal Judicial Center Director, Judge Jeremy Fogel. Thank you for joining us, Your Honor. Judge Fogel, why was the Federal Judicial Center created in 1967, and how has its mission changed over the last 50 years? The FJC originally was created uh, to be something of a think tank for the, for the federal courts. Uh, the leadership of the judiciary at the time thought that it would be very helpful for someone and, and some entity to take a big picture view, to look at the, uh, the courts from about the, from the 10,000 foot level and think about how to make the courts work better. Uh, and so originally it only had two staff members. The first director was a former Supreme Court Justice, Tom Clark. Uh, he had a research assistant, and most of the work was done by uh, consultants. And the idea, as I said, was to think, think big and think about uh, broader policy trends. Uh, that mission uh, changed over time uh, to include uh, much more concrete uh, efforts, both on the research side and also in terms of educating uh, judges and court staff. Just starting with the first few years of the FJC's existence, were there any particular issues that you tackled in the beginning? Yes, um, it shouldn't come as a surprise to modern uh, audiences, but uh, back at the beginning when the FJC started, the federal courts were entirely a paper operation. Automation as such didn't exist in the courts, uh, certainly data processing. So one of the first major areas that the FJC became involved in was the impact of technology. And uh, the predecessor to the current case management system uh, was actually developed uh, with the assistance of our, of our staff. So that was a def one of the early concerns. Let's stay on the think tank side. Uh, just walk me through the years. What were some of the major moments where the FJC helped shape the long term of the judiciary? Another issue uh, that is, when you think about it, uh, almost as critical uh, as how you manage data is uh, the issue of how you evaluate the work that courts are doing so you can allocate resources in a, in a fair way. So I think another major contribution that the FJC made in the early years was the development of a way of measuring case weights that people bought into, that people trusted, so that when it came time to request new judgeships or to allocate uh, judicial resources, there was a framework for doing it. It wasn't just a question of who had the most influence or who had the ear of the most influential people. Can you share some highlights from the last five decades, and are there any areas that most directly affect the public? Back in the early years when the center first came into existence, uh, a large number of cases were resolved by trial, and that was the, the mode by which disputes tend to be resolved uh, in the U.S. justice system. Over time, and really beginning in the 1980s and since then, it's moved uh, inexorably toward resolution in other ways, through alternative dispute resolution, through case management, through motion practice, and there's a variety of reasons that that's happened, but uh, the ability of judges to manage their docket, to manage their cases, uh, to get cases done efficiently uh, without the parties incurring uh, undue expense, uh, that's absolutely something that serves the public interest, that, that when judges don't do that, it costs more to litigate, access to the courts is, is limited. Uh, and so I think the work that the FJC has done, uh, both in the research side and also in the education side, uh, in, in teaching judges about case management has been very important. If we could move over to the education for a moment, tell us a little bit about the education programs, how they've evolved, and how do you work with judges? Well, they've evolved uh, in rather dramatic ways, I would say. Uh, the scope of what we cover in education has, has changed. It, it went from being uh, lectures about uh, specific areas of substantive law to material about the skills that are needed to be a leader uh, in the courts, to be a manager in the courts, uh, the skills that are needed to be an effective communicator, uh, oral and written communicator as a judge, uh, the skills that are needed to handle complex subject matter, uh, matters that show up in court that aren't limited to law, that involve science or involve technology or other areas that are difficult to understand. So the scope of the 
uh, learning has changed. And then finally, the way that we present it has changed. And by that, I mean it's not all in-person, face-to-face learning. We've uh, used the technology that exists to develop distance learning programs, to develop interactive learning that can be done over the Internet. And those are all things that have come about gradually. We've moved from very traditional, old-fashioned ways of education to a much more uh, varied uh, menu of options, both in terms of content and in terms of the way we deliver the content. Judge Fogel, you were appointed to the federal bench about 20 years ago. What are some concrete ways the FJC helped you do your job better? Uh, it started out right at the beginning with uh, what we affectionately call baby judge school. The orientation programs that the center uh, offers to new judges were very effective. Uh, the FJC for 21 years now has had a program on intellectual property, which is, I think, really just an essential uh, introductory course for judges who uh, are doing cases in that area and that was available to me during my first year. Uh, it was enormously valuable to me to, to be able to do that. So both the orientation program and the, um, the program that was relevant to the struggles I had as, as, a, as a new judge uh, were, were very helpful. Uh, later on, um, a few years later, I had a, a federal um, death penalty case. Uh, again, a very challenging and, and complicated area of the law. The FJC had a great uh, workshop that I was able to attend uh, along with some other judges who were in the same boat. Uh, I remember that class vividly as being one that, that really gave me the information that I needed, gave me the help I needed uh, to get through the case that I was uh, presiding over. The law is always changing, and that affects the need for research and education. Tell me some projects the center is working on now, and what do you see coming up in the next few years? Well, I think the, the biggest one, and it's just, it, it's hard to overstate how significant it is, the way that technology is affecting every aspect of our life, and courts are directly affected by that. The impact of social media, the impact of the way people get information, the impact of uh, how people process information. It's just a sea change in the way that society is organized and the way people think. So I think that's the biggest change, uh, and I think Along with that, there are some core values that the judiciary has always had. Justice, fairness, treating people uh, impartially, regardless of who they are and where they come from, doing things in accordance with the rule of law, making decisions that are in accordance with the law rather than the, the whims or prejudices of a particular judge. Those values don't change. The world around us has changed, but those rules are still the ones that guide us, those are still the principles that guide us. And so we have to figure out, in addition to talking about how to adapt to change, we also want to develop ways of helping judges stay in touch with those values and, and, and live them in daily life. If there's one thought you'd like to leave people with about the FJC, what would that be? There are many uh, examples of uh, organizations that do judicial education. Uh, there are organizations that uh, do research on judicial administration, uh, but there are very, very few, and I'm speaking worldwide, not just in the U.S., there's very, very few that combine uh, high-quality applied research, uh, very uh, modern and, and effective adult education, and the political and administrative independence that we have. And it's, uh, it's a great uh, tribute to our judiciary and, and to our legislative branch that we have been able to uh, be that way, to evolve into that type of agency with their support. Uh, I have to say there's no hesitation in my mind. This is the most uh, solidly professional group of people, top to bottom, that I've ever been around. And, and I think a lot of that really reflects the, the, um, um, the, the, the three pillars that I just talked about. Judge Fogel, thank you so much for joining us today. You're quite welcome. Uh, it is uh, a real uh, treat to be here. It's uh, one of many uh, serendipitous things that have happened to me, to, uh, starting with getting the job as director, but certainly to be here at the time of our 50th anniversary and to celebrate what a wonderful organization the FJC is, uh, is, a, is a, real, a real treat for me. Thank you. We've been talking with Judge Jeremy Fogel, director of the Federal Judicial Center. I'm Charlie Hall with the U.S. Courts. Join us again for our next On Topic.